was garbled in that uh, quasi press conference right there you're seeing on the screen. That's why, and again, I'm pleased not think I'm defending Luttrell, I'm not. That's why he went home and felt compelled to tidy up what he said and release that statement through Instagram. How did they not see that coming, though? How, how, how could you not see that that was going to, again, paint your club in a bad light? Because, look, we've all been around the game long enough to know what's going to happen. If a, if, a, if a guy walks out in this situation, they will follow him and they will ask questions. Why not just confront that I can't and, help. and put it to bed? I put can't it to help bed but and think. for your fans too. And, I'll, and I'll, I just want to say this too, for the South Sydney fans out there who, you know, you, you want the members, you want people to go and buy your merchandise, turn up and pay their money to go and watch your games, but you don't want to give them an explanation. And it's their best player, their highest talking, paid player, you know, after a disastrous year. And then I was guilty of this through my whole career. Dog, when you come up to me, I wasn't talking to you. You're talking to your fans, you're talking to your members, you're talking to the people that you've let down, right? So that's one thing that players need to get through their head, that when they're talking, then they're getting the message out to the people that believe in them. Right? And to me, it looks like Sousa just let him go by himself. Mm. And they don't want to be part of this. Gordy, I think you might be right. There's a part of me that thinks that, as I said before, he created this mess. Why should South Sydney have to go out there and front up themselves? Yeah, but they've got to take some ownership, the leadership. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, because right, if they, they, right. they, they, they pull back a little bit, in my opinion, if they were a bit harder on Latrell and disciplined him more in the future for past indiscretions, then maybe it would have been better for him. You've you got to look at the big picture. You've got to set standards at clubs. You've got to go, this is the guy that I want the whole team to follow. He's our leader. He's our enforcer. He's our best player. So we've got to penalise him or discipline him like we would any other player because he's the man that we, we want leading our club. If they had done that in the past, they may not be in this situation where Latrell is right now. He may not be there if they had done the right thing by him then. So if, if they keep doing the same thing, it's going to keep happening and it's going to keep, keep happening. I just thought it was a real opportunity missed by the club today and their leadership. Oh, look, I agree. It's a, it's a different issue we're talking about going back in time. But yes, I think it's quite clear if South Sydney had been stronger in their discipline on the trail over the past four or five years, mm. we might not be at this point that we are right now. When will he serve his match ban? Uh, to be confirmed, Braith, obviously there is a push for next year and there's obviously the thought that it should be done now. My personal opinion is that if he is found to be penalised one game, he should serve it on the day that the penalty comes down, not next year, albeit there'll be an argument saying that it doesn't punish him at all this year because he's injured. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, you're going to put it back because to next year? Yeah. Of course you have to. You have when to do fine. that. But you know why you have to do that, dog? Because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. At the moment, Luttrell is out injured. You cannot, you cannot go in and allow him to serve that one game suspension this year when he's out injured. And, and even if it's for South Sydney's benefit, they've got to do the right thing here. We've had players in the past. Mitchell Pearce is a great example. He got, he got fined $125,000, I think 50000 suspended, but an eight-match ban. You've got Jared Wawira Hargraves this week who's gone out and clipped someone high. He gets a four-match ban. <laughs> a four-match ban. You tell me what's the worst look for the game. Jared's tackle or Latrell's photo? What's the worst look? And yet, if they don't want to cop a one-game ban for that, they're kidding themselves. He's been ruled out for the year. What if they... Well, that's what Ben Hornby said a few weeks ago. What if they were to say that he was fit for round 27? Well, he'd have to train so normally, right? Let's just say if it's your star player, you want him training and he should be running and you'd say he'd be running for three weeks. Hmm. Brace right, though. It is open slather as to when he's uh, going to fulfil that suspension. What happens if, if it is round 27? He's fit, he's named on a Tuesday night and they go, there's your one week suspension. Yeah, and then he was fit to play Origin and he pulled out a day before. So there's a totally different argument. And if you're fit to play NRL, you've got to have... <coughs> At least three or four it, weeks under your belt. If you have a suspension through a penalty, I just don't think you can push it don't around to your own game. benefit as to when. If it comes down on a Tuesday, well, then it starts from that Tuesday. All right. It's going to be interesting to see how this pans out and how the Rabbitohs respond to after that board meeting today with Latrell Mitchell. Now, it is D-Day for Broncos and Dolphins. What a game this is, given the circumstances, the significance of the result and the rivalry. But... It, it's all about the coaches, isn't it? Wayne Bennett taking on Kevin Walters. Mm. Who's under more pressure? Who needs this more than the other?
Both men are under pressure. Look, Kevy's been under pressure all year, and we've sat there and we've we've spoken about the fact that the Broncos have gone from last year's grand final to on the verge of missing the eight, and now they've fought back again. I can't exclude the fact Wayne's under huge pressure going into this game. For him, it would be personal. He he was sent packing from the club. It was a very bitter divorce. Um, he, he has held resentment against the club for what happened back then. Mm. And, and he won't come out and say this, but he would like nothing more. Mm. Nothing <laughs> more <laughs> than to beat the Broncos and in this game. And you know what? Like, the flags that are up around. So when you're in Brisbane now, you know it's a rugby league city. There's dolphins everywhere. It's on the radio every day. Put your fins up. The Broncos flags are over every sign. This is our house. Mm. So I think players too. I think the players are under a lot of pressure. You saw Tony Stakes last year. It went down to the wire. He scores right in the far corner. This is our house. So I think everybody's under the pump. Would Kevy take it personal too? Oh, I think he, he yeah, calls look, the same Wayne. I think Hill. coaches do. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt Kevy would want to get one over mm. Wayne. There's no doubt. But I reckon Wayne over the club more because there's a there's a bit more bad blood. And there. I also think Wayne, look, if, if he was being completely honest with himself, like I don't necessarily agree with Buzz's um, belief that Wayne should have stood down from the job. But I, I think if, if if Wayne was looking at the record this year and the fact that they have lost nine of their last 12 games. And, and while I, I wouldn't say that the, the team's not playing for him because they've fought hard in most of those games, but when you think about a Bennett coach team, they always say, good defence, and they don't beat themselves. Well, this year on too many occasions, the Dolphins have beaten themselves with silly errors. And then even Bad the last three games, the three games that they won, I think they let in 28 points, 28 points, 30 points. That's not normally a Wayne Bennett coach side. And so he would have to be disappointed. What has gone Absolutely. wrong there then? If it's not if it's not the fact that he signed with South mid-season, what is it? I, I think, think it's injuries. We've got Flegler, Pangai and Wallace. Mm. Played single figures all year. Flegler, and Flegler got injured round four or five. Did, and they were, cut, they were, they were in the Gilbert, top song. Another one that yeah. was gone for the he was season. Gone, Marshall but, but, King's but, been gone for a long while. But yeah. Gilbert and Flegler were gone early. Yeah. And they were still coming fourth and red hot. Or, or yeah. top four, red hot, around uh, Marshall round 11 and 12. I, what I, about still, I still think it's discipline. Like, if, if you watch enough of their games and you can go back to moments, I, I think, was it the Titans where they were leading? Was it 12 nil yeah, or something yeah, like that yeah. coming into halftime? And Josh Kerr gave a really ridiculous sin bin in a way. And I, I think he'd done that three weeks in a row. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, young Katoa will come out and not make a touch finder on a, on a penalty and just things like that. Simple mistakes where guys are, are just letting themselves down too often, which just backfires on the team. But again, you go back to the fact that's not how Bennett coaches his team to play. And Wayne Bennett's side, for the history of his whole career, what don't they do? They don't beat themselves. Yes. And this side's beating themselves. So there's something mm. on the training paddock that's gone. What about the fact it's an ageing forward pack? Enthusiasm yeah, they, okay, goes so far though, yeah, Braith, but, they but in the, the end, they did. They did. And he, you know, but and enthusiasm only goes so far. And, and he, after a long he year... Make that as an excuse. I'm not so saying it's an excuse. What it's is a reason. Then? But it's an excuse. It's a reason But if why. you buy an ageing forward pack and then two years later go, well, they're an ageing forward pack. Well, do you think the age is playing an impact on the back okay. end of this year? Ma maybe uh, it is. The right. youth of a West Tigers forward pack is making more of an impact. Mm. But you, you, you know, the old heads maybe get it the is, job but you done. can't use that yeah. because you bought those players. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm saying it's a reason, perhaps, yeah. why they're collapsing. Last year they won three of their last 14. And as you said, Crawls, this year, three of their last mm. 12. Mm. So there's clearly a problem at the back end of the season. Well, I do and I think age is playing a factor. I do think they lack depth in their roster. I think you've got to be fair. And, but every and, club and does. I know they do, yeah. but, but, but some clubs more than others. And they are two years into their you know, existence. And there is a lack of depth there. And when you lose a guy like Gilbert and you lose a guy like Flegler and then Marshall King's injury is really yeah. rotten. Yeah. But I'll go back to the fact that I, I do believe they could have probably picked up three or four of those wins mm. with better discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Good call, that one crawls. Now, the mighty Bulldogs taking on the Manly Seagulls mm. and we believe it's going to be a record crowd live and exclusive Friday, 5 p.m. What a game this is going to be on Fox League. Bulldogs on fire at the moment. Manly Seagulls need to bounce back after last week's loss, and they, they do believe there's going to be over 45,000 at this game, which is, and most of them will be Bulldogs, let's be honest, but incredible scenes. Yeah, it is. Look, the, the Bulldogs have done everything to make you believe they are now contenders for this premiership. Manly haven't. Seabold said <clears throat> before the game last week against the Tigers, the focus was going to be on their defence. 
and they went out. And I know they had three players sin bin throughout that game, but they really let themselves down and they took a, a step backwards. If it wasn't for Turbo being out there, they would have got beaten by more. Do you guys clearly believe that they are genuine contenders? I do. Yeah. The Bulldogs. Yeah, the I best do. defensive I, side wins I, the competition. I disagree with a lot of, a lot of the, the experts. And, and he, like Gordy said, they are best defence in the competition. Yeah. You can win a comp. You, you simply can. And I go back as I, we were in a position at the Roosters 2010 where we were sort of similar to the Bulldogs mid-season and we all got on this run and everyone goes, oh, yeah, you know, they're confident. Confidence is so important because then, you, then you've got belief. And I said it a few weeks ago in the players around you, then all of a sudden you feel invincible and you feel like, yeah, we can do this. Every game that goes by, every win that they have, every comeback that they, you know, they've been behind, they come back and win. The, the belief grows and they've got the talent to do it. They don't have the talent that other teams have got, but right now they can trump that with confidence. They're getting belief. enough points, right? Do you believe they can score three tries against most sides? I think they can. You reckon they can defend three tries? Well, and they back it. themselves. They've proven they've like if, if you ask us, if you ask us, you know, uh, the Roosters more chance of beating them, a Penrith more chance of beating them, a Melbourne, storm. we're going to say yes. Absolutely. But can they beat all of those teams on their day? Mm. I think they can. Do you, Gordy? Yeah. Know. If if you went there and you showed them a little bit of disrespect and maybe went there and go, well, well, like we're just going to run through this, and it's not going to be as tough as playing Penrith or Melbourne and Melbourne, I think they can get some sides. I think that they can surprise them because they've surprised me. From the beginning of the year to the middle of the year, I thought this side's improved. And from the middle of the year to now, they've improved. Well, they beat more. Melbourne and they beat the Roosters. So they've, you know, they've, they've, they've knocked off a couple of those big teams. So I think they can get it done. But the challenge is doing it a few weeks in a row to win a grand final. Tom Trebojevic admits taking a pay cut would have allowed the club to clear up space on the salary cap. But ultimately, the NRL blocked the proposal. Yeah, it would come for me, but look, ultimately, just it kind of uh, talked to Steve's about it and, um, you know, we had a chat, uh, I guess, the management team here and we explored a few options, but it wasn't meant to be. But we've got some, you know, quality players here that we, need to, we, we want to keep here and you want to just, you know, build the best squad you can. So when you sit on the sideline, not being able to perform, the, I guess, the way you want to kind of comes on the back of that. But uh, ultimately, it was, wasn't, uh, you know, didn't get approved or anything. So I guess we'll just move forward. Find this... Fascinating. Uh, yesterday the story broke that Tom had approached the club to hand some of his money in because he hadn't played as many games as he would have liked to help the club with salary cap and, and other players in it. Now, Gordy and myself couldn't believe it for a second. Do we believe that the club had nothing to do with him apparently walking into the front office? What are you office? laughing at, Gordy? Oh, it just would have opened up a Pandora's box. So then you the think, Titans would have your went laugh before. suggests that you think Manly was behind this? Otherwise, they say, no, you're not doing it, and we don't put it in there. Of course, don't you? You say, no, Tommy, we love you. What you've done for our game, you actually kept us in the game the other day. No, injuries are part of it, don't you? I'd be disappointed if the club did put that guilt trip on him. I really would be, because, look, we all know what sort of character Tom Travojevic is. He's sold to the earth. He's a bit Absolutely. of a soft touch, <clears throat> Tommy, and I say that totally respectfully. But if you went to it's Tom with some Tom proposal, but that's Tom the problem, would dog. But digest did, it. OK, did but Tom the go problem. to them? That if or did if they, they go did to Tom? that, that's the wrong thing to do. You, you, don't, you don't do that to your star player. Because every player that gets injured, the guilt injured, trip right? on him. So Tino Fasua Malawi, Titans, best player, he hasn't played all year. It's just the Pandora's box. Well, a contract's a contract. It's watertight. You can't expect to hand money back if you're injured, mm. just as you can't expect mm. to go with your hand out if you have a bumper year. Do you know what would never happen? The managers hand back their commission too. Surely they would, Gordy. <laughs> That's very true. Surely they would. <laughs> oh, oh, have, you, have you ever heard, though, of a player walking into the front office? <laughs> you know, and this is that's why Gordy and I were laughing last night, and we, we thought it was a G-up, because we just couldn't for a second believe that it would happen. And we're hearing rumours today, I've got to be honest, that it was the club, but I can't confirm that. They're just rumours that just it was the club this year, went to him. Nelson and Munster and mm. all the players that they've... Yeah, no... Mm. I'll ask you to. You play at the highest, uh, the highest level. If you had an injury, yeah, I did. I said prone it year. Yeah. Would you consider handing anything back if you felt somewhat guilty about not giving the club what you'd promised to give them? Uh, if maybe more a suspension, and it was my fault, than getting injured, yeah. Yeah. because injuries, injuries are injuries part of the game. game. 
Yeah. Injuries, and then I've watched blokes like Phil Lee that got injured twice at twice at tra training and had to give the game away. It's also yeah, so no. It's depressing too. Like you're not pl like yeah. you you want to be playing, you want to be helping your teammates. You feel guilty as it is being off the field, and Tom would as well. It's not a good feeling, and your career doesn't go forever. Tom's had a lot of injuries. What if he gets a career-ending injury next year and he's taking a pay cut? to give to the club, you know, it's it's just... Yeah. But you go into an agreement for the good and the bad, don't oh, you? you do. like, that's what a contract's supposed to be about. You do. All right, well, just like a marriage, calls. <laughs> James Tedesco says, Jared Wira agrees now she let the team down as the Roosters enforce a cop to three-game ban for a high shot on Sam Verrills. A couple of games left for Jared here at the club, so um, from to miss another three games for us is... Um, yeah, he's, he's really disappointed in himself. It's not ideal. Get up for us when he comes back in um, finals and finals week. JWH, I love him. I love the way that he plays. He's a great guy. He's only got a few games left. But I have to ask the question, did he let the Roosters down with that hit? Oh, I think he did. I sat here a few weeks ago and defended him for the last one. I, I thought the suspension was over the top, but I'm not going to do it again. He's 11 <laughs> minutes into his return and he comes up with this. You know what I mean? And now he's out for another three weeks. It's, yeah. it's, he, he's got to be better. I know he's played this way throughout his career and Trent Robinson's come out in the past and said we don't want him to change and like you said last night Gordy you, you don't want him to change but you can't keep past. getting suspended like that. The game that. has gone past Jared sadly yeah. to many yeah. in the last Not when he years. stays on the field. Yeah. The concern I've got and I'll ask you Gordy is that he is the fiercest prop of his generation arguably the best prop yeah. in the modern era but how bad will his legacy be tarnished through these constant suspensions. No, he's no. playing at a club that's been around for a hundred years. So you don't think when years. people talk about Jared in 10, 15 years' time, they will just talk football, or will they go, gee, he had a lot of time on the sideline? Les Boyd just made the Hall of Fame. Mm. Yeah. Jared, Jared that played 300 games, game. 300 games in the toughest position on the yeah. field, and no. played like a warrior every week. Every time he takes that ball up, in, in, plays like a warrior. He's a 1980s front rower, right? Playing in the wrong area, but he's playing the right game. I love watching him play. In the 80s, he would be put up on a mantelpiece. Maybe he'd have statues everywhere because of the way he played. You know one thing about Jared, though? He's a team first player. Yeah. He, he can, mm. he, like, he, if you watch him train, and yeah. he is an animal. Like, he's one of the fittest forwards I've ever played with. Like, he, he puts the team first, he works his ass off, and his legacy. Silver lining, Spencer Lenu, more minutes on that before front the finals. Too, Braith, he's had to overcome some significant injuries, too, hasn't he? Like, mm. we sat there four or five years ago and we questioned if he was going to come back from that knee he injury. He and he came, he came back and won premiership. He does some, he does some silly things watching the footy. <laughs> he, he does. You, you tell me, though, would you like to run out behind him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, see, and, that's the, and then that's the point. So, like, when you play... Like, I played against Mark Guy, right? And you had to know where he was in the line. Adrian Morley yeah. was exactly the was. same. Ian Roberts, <laughs> Ian Roberts, Sment Gillespie, there was guys there that... And Les Davison, you just had to look to see where... Just when you're playing against Blocker in his prime. Yeah, in Don't underestimate the amount of leadership he's got at that club either. Oh, yeah. He is the one that they follow. Well, that, he is the one that they look up to. It's the intimidation factor, like you just Absolutely. said, but he also lifts everyone in that club. Not just the players, I'm talking staff as well, Jared. So, congratulations, but enjoy the next three weeks. <laughs> Cameron Murray uh, faces the judiciary tonight. Uh, thoughts on this? Is he a chance of getting it downgraded, right, or, or trying to get it off? You'd hope so. I don't think it's a grade two. I think it's a grade one. I think the bunker thought initially it was um, not a sin bin and then it took a minute to, to come up with the right decision, didn't it? And then it gets hit with a grade two. Is anybody from South going to go with him? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> too soon? <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> no, but you know what? No, that's, that's not that bad, you know? And I think it was still you know, direct contact to the head. It was I, flush. I realise, but like, when you look, like he's Probably got his not. head behind his teammates. He's just coming in. Accidents happen. Yeah, no, nah, um, one for me. I don't think, yeah, I don't think that's as bad. Yeah, All right, for the grade B, uh, calls. what's your B for the week for B, this week? B for the week. Look, we've all had our say on the referees this week, but I, I think that, that bunker decision from Liam Kennedy the other night, not, not to sin bin Stephen Crichton, for me, it just reeked of confusion. And, and I think it points to the bigger issue. Now, you hear Graham Ennisley come out and he, he says that, that that one bad decision over the weekend makes other decisions look bad, even when they were right. I, I disagree with that. I think over the course of the season, we've seen so much indecision, inconsistency, confusion 
um, among so many areas of the game. I'd love to hear the referee's side of this. With, without the NRL telling them what to say, I'd love to hear from their mouth what's going on there, what they see as the issues. Are they being overcoached? Are the rules too complex? Are they confused? Because we talk about having this summit at the end of the season involving the top minds in the game. What's the use of having a summit if you're not getting their perspective, their honest perspective, mm. without any repercussions. It, it they need be to the be coaches. able to it's tell the be, story. It's got to be the current players that actually get hit in the head, right, and actually make the tackles. Probably got to have independent doctors there to talk them through the consequences, and then you have the referees that go, well, what do you want us to police? And then if we all can get roughly on the same page, but at the moment, none of us are on the same but, page. But the problem with the rest, too, I, I, I believe, is... It, they're the, top, they're the top in their profession. Like They're professional Absolutely referees. They, they don't get to the NRL level because they're bad referees. They get there because they're good referees. But, but uh, it seems to me that they're being overcoached. They're, they're, they're analysing when they go into a game too much about what we should be expecting instead of just going out and refereeing to the I rules. I see that Graham like... Mannersley's lost the dressing room. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I I'm said just that saying that night. I want to see, I want to hear what they've got to say. I said that last night. Do you think they look confused? Of course they do. Look, Braith, everyone, knowing what we've seen this year and watching that Stephen Crichton tackle the other night, you knew straight away that's a sin bin. Now, you might not agree that it's a sin bin, no, but on what we've seen this year... The, no, the tackle I didn't think was a sin bin. Roger falling over, I thought, he's got hit in the head. I didn't think the tackle was that ferocious. You mightn't think that. You mightn't think that. But on well, what I we've didn't. seen this year, yes. I think 99% of people, Gordy, would have agreed that that was a sin bin. Once Roger But fell the over. fact that a man in the bunker who's a professional in his craft can, can have you know, second-guess himself on that, it's got to point to confusion. It's got to point to... He must be ticking off have these boxes. From the judiciary what am I looking at? The, well, do we have someone from the judiciary that watches these tackles all the time, the one that gives them the weeks? Do they sit in the bunker? Because but, but, but the, they're the, the ones that make the, bunker the decisions. Referee, the bunker official should be able to see that, Gordon, because we all can. And that's what I'm saying. To me, it points to this overall confusion. I heard Ricky Stewart talk about it a, a few weeks ago. Where referees he said, used to just be I a don't send blame off. the referees. It, it he used said, to be a penalty. They've got too many voices in their ear. Right. Through, through all our career, it used to be a penalty or a send-off. It had to be really bad to be a send-off or it was just a penalty and we moved on. Mm. And then you'd go to the judiciary, right, and then they would deal with it. Which now, is the way forward. Now, we're trying to be the judiciary... Every night. I spoke to a referee well, three weeks ago, and he was a former leading referee about 15 years ago. And even back there you then... There Bill. He, no, it wasn't Bill. <laughs> even back then, he said, the amount of noise in my earpiece is overpowering at yeah, times. Right. It's mm. confusing. It saps you of confidence. You don't know which way you should go for yeah. fear that they're telling you it's right, it's wrong. Get the bunker out of their ears. The bunker's already intruding into our lives too much. Get rid of the bunker out of their lugs. Let them referee, just like the players are allowed to play.